Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we're going to discuss formulas in Excel. This is video number 11 of a planned set of training videos on basic Excel. The target audience is students and the objective is to get you up to speed quickly on using Excel. For best results, put your play speed on 2x and or jump to the chapters of interest down below in the timeline. First up, what are formulas? So what are formulas? Well, a formula is an expression and an expression inside of that formula can perform calculations like one plus one or an expression can act within a cell on values in a cell or on ranges of a cell. So for example, equals the cell plus one and a cell would be like A1 or B1 or C2. An expression also can call functions like sum of A1 colon B3, which sums a range of cells. So an expression can be all of those things. And that expression is what constitutes a formula. So here are some example formulas. First, we'll look at an expression with a, within a cell that's just performing a calculation. So right here, I put the focus equals one plus one, and we know that's gonna come out to two. So here's my formula in the formula bar. Here's my value two. I could change it. I could do equals one plus two. It's gonna change and I'll go back. So that's one way that a formula can exist and that's just as uh, calculation with no references. Let's move along here, go to number two. Second option, we'll put a value in here, two, three, we'll put three in. And so the second option is gonna take and use equals. Always have to click equals to indicate that you want a formula to go in that cell. I'm gonna click on this cell, A4, so equals A4 plus, I'll add three to it, and we get six. Three plus three is six. And note over here, if I change this to a one, then this cell is gonna automatically update to a four because one plus three is four. So that's a second type of formula or expression, and that is to have a cell reference and then some math. And here's a third option. We can have an expression with multiple cells in it. So let's just put in, mm, one, two, and three. And over here, we're gonna say equals, always start off an expression for, or a formula with equals, that cell plus this cell plus this cell. And I'll pause while I'm here. I've explained this in a prior video. Blue highlight, A6 in blue. Blue matches blue. Red, B6 matches red. Purple, C6 matches purple. When you're looking at the formula, it helps you identify quickly the cell references from within the expression or formula and out in their original position. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and have it calculate and it should come to six. And that is our third example of an expression with multiple cell references. And the final example we're gonna do, but by all means not all that's possible, we're gonna do an expression using functions. So we're gonna reuse these same values up here, but down in the expression or formula, we're gonna hit equals we're gonna type out sum. Notice all those functions, there are so many. But anyway, we're gonna do sum and then we're gonna highlight the range, those three, put a close parenthesis on it and hit enter. And of course the values match because they're doing the same thing. And this function equals sum, it changed the sum to uppercase, A6 to C6, the range that I selected there. We talked about how the formula shows up here in the formula bar, but check this out, if I hit the control and tilde key, then it changes from values in all the cells to formula view. So control tilde, gone. Control tilde, formulas. Control tilde, values. Control tilde, formulas. And back to values. Uh, another way to do this is to click the formulas bar and the formula auditing section here. That's the one I meant to click. It's, the buttons are different when it's zoomed in. If I hover, what does it say? Show formulas, there we go. And there's the control, uh, the little tick mark on the keyboard. So two ways to do it. Next up, why should I use formulas? So why should I use formulas? Well, in one word, automation. Formulas are the magic behind spreadsheet productivity. For example, before spreadsheets and formulas, accountants had to hand calculate giant ledgers one cell at a time but now spreadsheets instantly calculate the math and relationships across huge sheets with hundreds or thousands of cells through formulas created. 
Repeatability is another reason to use formulas. It goes hand in hand with automation. Once you've translated all your business logic or science logic into formulas, now you can repeat your process over and over again with ease. And visualization is another reason to use formulas. Through combining formulas and conditional formatting, for example, in this heat map over here to the right, there's no graphs needed. You just instantly can tell that red's bad here, green's good here, yellow's in between here. You can see where the bad and the good areas are from the heat map. And formulas drive that behind the scenes. That's just one example of many possible visualizations that can be set using formulas. Next up, math operators. To get started, we need to review the math operators in Excel. Plus is for addition, minus is for subtraction, the dash. Asterisk is for multiplication, not the little x. The forward slash, the question mark key, is for division, not the divided by symbol. The caret, shifted six, is for exponents. Or alternatively, you could use the power function, two to the fifth, or power two to the fifth, same thing. Parentheses dictate order of operations. One plus two is done first. So three times three is nine. If you just multiply, if you added and multiplied them all out, the order of precedence is multiplication first, two times three, and then addition, one plus two times three. So one plus six is seven. Nine for this one, seven for that one. Parentheses matter, and we're gonna see that. So let's just jump in and get going. So addition equals two plus three, we get five. Subtraction equals five minus three, we get two. Multiplication equals five times the asterisk, three, we get 15. Equals 15 divided by three for division, we get five. We're gonna do exponentiation, equals two to the power, shift six, to the power of five, two times two times two, it's 32. Equals the power function, and we're gonna learn functions in the video after this one. But for now, just know that the power function here is the same as exponentiation. Parentheses equals one plus two. It's gonna operate first and get the value three times three. Three times three is nine, so we have nine. Down here, we just write them all out. Equals one plus two times three. Two times three is six, and then add one, seven. And there's our seven. And it's the same if we put parentheses following the precedence operators, and we get seven. So that is the operators, and a little bit about order of precedence, and a little bit about parentheses. Next up, cell ranges. Cell ranges are an important part of formulas. Cell ranges are just a collection of cells, one row, two columns, two rows, one column. These are all cell ranges. And here's a bigger cell range. Um, so four different samples in green of cell ranges. Now, let's say that I want to click the equal sign and drag and drop. This is what a cell range reference looks like. C3, the upper left starting cell, C3, and D3, D3, the lower right, there's only one row, but the lower right ending point, that is my cell reference. If I do a bigger cell reference down here, hit the equal sign, upper left is C11, Lower right is E14, and there's my cell reference. Equals C11, upper left, colon, means I'm entering a range, a cell range, and then E14. So that is what a cell range looks like. Uh, these cell ranges, let me give you an example. You're gonna learn about this in the next video, but let me take and do the average, open parenthesis, do the cell range, C3 to D3, and then close parenthesis and hit enter. And voila, I've calculated the average of those two cells. And likewise, I can do the same thing down here. Give me the average of this whole cell range, C11 D14. Don't forget the closing parenthesis, hit enter, 4.75. So that is why you'd want to use cell ranges inside of function calls. It's just way quicker than trying to calculate things by hand. I mean, can you imagine? If you wanted to do this by hand, equals this cell, and you'd have it in parentheses, and then you'd have to go plus this cell, plus this cell, and so on, all the way to the end, and then you'd have to close parentheses, and then you'd have to divide it by the number of cells, which is 12. 
and I didn't do all of them, but you can see it would just go on and on and on and on here. Much faster to use the cell range and plunk it in an average function. So this cell range here is referencing cells on the same worksheet. What if I wanted to add a worksheet? Yeah, we'll just call it C3. And what if I copied these values? I'll actually cut them and I'll paste them over here on C3. And what if back on this formula, well, <laughs> It automatically worked. Excel was smart enough to go, oh, those values were cut and moved to sheet three with a bang, an exclamation point, C6 to E9. So if we go look at sheet three, yep, C6 to E9, Excel knew that the data moved and it updated the worksheet with a worksheet prefix to the range. Next up, relative versus absolute cell references. So there are two types of cell references in Excel. There's relative cell references, type one, which is like B3, referencing this cell, B3, that's a relative reference. And then if I put dollar signs in, that's an absolute cell reference. And this basically has to do with copy pasting the formulas. If I copy paste a B3 down to here, it would become B4, B5, B6. But if I copy paste the dollar sign B3, it doesn't change. So let me demonstrate that. Let's multiply two by each of these. So we'll start out with an equal sign, two times this value, hit enter. So B3 times D3 gives me two times one is two. Now if I drag this down to copy that formula, ah, they're all zero, why are they all zero? Let's investigate. Heck, we could even do our little formula trace precedence. Ah, it's not referencing the two, it's referencing a zero. That's what the problem is. So let's uh, remove the arrows and look at the formula. B4, we don't want B4. We want it to stay locked on cell B3 as we paste it all the way down. So B3, D3, B4, D4, B5, and so on. And the B needs to stay the same. So let's delete these. Let's go back up here. Let's click on the B3 cell. I could enter a dollar sign and enter a dollar sign, but I won't. Instead, I'm going to click on and hit the F4 key, which does it for me. I still have two, but when I drag and drop the calculation, it's correct this time. And notice the B3 up here in the formula as I click up and down through the values, it stays constant because it's an absolute cell reference. And that's why you would want to use absolute cell references for uh, copy pasting and locking a row in place. It's really useful for constants or important variables, inflation rate, interest rate, number of years, number of months, whatever you're dealing with, you'll have some constants that are referenced throughout your equations and you'll want to lock those in with absolute references. Or later we're going to look at named cells as well. That's another way to lock the value in so it doesn't change as you copy and paste it. Next up, formula auditing and error tracing. Formula auditing can be very helpful in troubleshooting an issue. Use it to graphically confirm all cell references and find where the precedence and dependence are located before and after, basically, users of the cell. So let's demo that. Let's uh, put a cell value of one in here, a cell value of two in here. Let's make this formula be the sum of these two values plus two. And then let's make this the multiplication of the prior cell value times three. So these two roll up into here, and this one rolls up into here. And let's check out the formulas menu item. And actually, I need to click on a cell. So I'm gonna click on the middle cell because I can go both directions. And I'm gonna say, click trace precedence. And voila, the little blue arrows say that these two cells are referenced in cell D7. And now let's click on trace dependence and see what's downstream. And what's downstream of D7 is E8. And the arrow points that way. So we can see the flow through the spreadsheet. In this simple example, not very helpful. But in a giant spreadsheet where you have references all over the place, it can really help you trace down a problem much quicker than if you're just trying to go to this spreadsheet, look at it, remember what's going on, and there's four or five different references, and then click through each one way easier to have the graphical representation linking the cells. Now, if I want to get rid of those errors, it's easy. You're still in the formulas menu item, formula auditing, and just click remove arrows. So those are the tracing arrows just to show you what makes up a 
formula. But what if you have an error? So let's let's force an error, and then let's see how we can actually trace that error. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to change the number 2 to the letter X. And that's going to cause an error because, make it a little wider, you can see it'll give you a value error. It'll give you an error because a number plus a letter just doesn't compute, and you'll get an error. And so now that we've triggered that error, how can we actually trace it? And there's a couple different ways. Let's go ahead and click on the cell with an error. And then we'll scroll up here and click on, in the formulas menu, the formula auditing section of the toolbar, there is a, an error checking button. So let's click it. And in that error clicking button is a help on this error. And you can click that and it'll bring up a Microsoft Office support page and walk you through the error. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. If it's not, you can show the calculation steps. I'm going to do that a different way, but you could click it here, here, and walk through the values. You could ignore the error, not recommended. You could edit in the formula bar, which is just going to flip the focus back here and close this dialog. Uh, is there any options worth mentioning? No, I don't want to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window and do the way that I like to do it instead, which is there's an error, so I click on the cell with an error. I don't actually click the button here in the formula auditing window of the formulas menu. I do the drop down. No, I actually don't even do that. I could, yeah. I could trace the error, but I'm going to do the evaluate formula. That's my favorite. So let's click the evaluate formula, and what you'll see here is the formula, exactly like I have it typed in here, text. And here, C5, C6 plus 2. So we're going to evaluate. And notice that the underline, that says that the first ex part of the expression we're going to evaluate is what's underlined, C5, evaluate. It gets a 1. Why? Because it looked up the 1 there. C6 is the next part that it's going to evaluate. It grabs an X. doesn't have a problem yet. Now it's going to add the 2. And watch what happens when I evaluate that step. Value error. So right there, that's how you know, oh, problem was with 1 plus x, and at that point you can troubleshoot it. In a big complex equation with multiple nested levels of parentheses, this is really handy because you can see what part is failing. So I really like this evaluate. Formula menu, formula auditing, the evaluate formula button. And it's the same as if you showed calculation steps. See how it's the same? But now well, let's just run through it really quick. So if I hit a see, it's already got the one. That's what I don't like, and it's got the plus x. It's already downloaded, pulled down the pieces. Whereas if I had started with this guy, it starts with the original raw function and starts pulling the pieces down. So it's one step further up the chain. So I prefer that one. Next up, name cells. Using name cells will make your formulas much more readable in plain English. So as an example. Everyone knows from middle school math that rate times time equals distance. That's fine. So let's create, I've set up a rate value 60 miles per hour and a time of two hours. So let's do a formula here, and it's going to be equals our rate times our time. And there we go. We have our correct answer of 120. But what is this? If you just, if this did not exist and you couldn't see it and you're wondering what's going on, you would have to, look at B2 times B3 and go, what is that? B2, oh, eight times time. Oh, it must be a distance. Anyway, imagine a more complex formula. It gets really tricky to disentangle all of these cell references when you could be using plain English name values. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we get started, I want you to notice that this name box is empty. In this particular spreadsheet, I don't have any name values yet. But whatever I click on, I'm on cell F5, that's all that's there. If I'm on cell J5, that's all that's there. So that's our level set. Now we're going to go start adding in the names. So cell B2 right here to name that rate and cell B3 to name that time, there's a couple ways to do it. We could go highlight the cell and go to formulas and go to the define names. And we could one by one define the name and click define name. And look at that, Excel's smart enough to go, oh, there's a word rate to the left. I bet rate is what we want. And it is what we want, but I'm not going to do it. And we could do the same thing for time, one by one. And if we had 10 of these, we could one by one by one define the name. 
But actually, there's a faster way. And that way is to select the entire range and then do the formula menu item and the define names and click create from selection. And look at that. Excel is smart enough to go, oh, create names from the selected. Okay. The left column is the name. And I'm going to hit OK. And bam. Did anything happen? doesn't look like it, but in fact, yes, something happened. Look at the drop down. There's rate. If I click on rate, it jumps there. Let me click way over here. If I click on time, boom, it goes right to that cell reference. Heck, if I'm even on a different worksheet and I click on rate, boom, it jumps right back to sheet 16 from 12 and goes right to rate. So these are a handy navigational aid, the uh, variable names for uh, name cells. They're handy for navigation and, as we're about to see, they're really handy for cell formulas, for uh, clarity and formulas. Now, unfortunately, Excel wasn't smart enough to change these references. That's fine. Let's delete it and start over. So equals this cell times this cell. And notice this time when I click them, hit enter, instead of saying B2 and B3, it used the actual cell name, rate times time. And check that out. So my function, or my formula is equals rate times time. That's so handy. If you had interest rate, inflation rate, whatever your key variables are, your global variables, if you will, you can have those named in a table or in a master worksheet. And it's just a really clean way of labeling your formulas. And finally, calculation options. At the formula menu, there's a calculate options or calculation options drop down, And if you click that, there's three modes that you can choose from. Automatic, automatic except for data tables, and manual. There's also a calculate now button that manually calculates the entire workbook. And it's used if you're in manual mode. And there's a calculate sheet mode. And that manually calculates current worksheet, not the entire workbook. And that's used also if you're in manual mode. And note, it used to be more commonly used, these two Calculate Now and Calculate Sheet options, when computer RAM was smaller and CPUs were slower, and it was used for large worksheets. I haven't used these options in years. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.